In this Autodesk Fusion 360 tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to the Form or Sculpt workspace. To get to the Form or Sculpt workspace, make sure you have the Solid menu selected in the Design workspace, and then click Create Form. Here we have new controls. It's very similar. We can create a box, and then click on our plane, drag out a box, pull it up, and say OK. We can also create planes. Simply drag, and then we have a plane. We can create cylinders, very similar to regular design and object solid modeling mode. We also get something called a quad ball. We can place this here, scale it down, press OK. We can also draw faces that have an interesting shape. For example, click, click, click. And I can make a polygon face that's a little bit different. And then I can draw another one right next to it. So I can make faces like this. We also have additional tools underneath. We can make toruses. You can change the thickness of the torus. And when we make any of these, for example, if I go back to box and I click, I can now make this box. I have opportunities to change the length. I can make it all uniform by typing 50, 50, 50. And then I can also change the number of faces that go along the different pieces. So if you see here, now I can make the width faces say 10, and then it'll have many, many more faces this way. And then if I made the height faces 22, it's going to be very much subdivided this way. Generally, we want to keep our geometry very low in the beginning, but just know that you can increase it quickly from the start. We also have pipe commands, extrude, revolve, sweep and loft. These behave very similar to the solid modeling workspace. So why would we use this? Well, modeling in T-splines is very similar to polymodeling, and we can create all kinds of interesting forms that then we can take back into the solid workspace and use parametric modeling tools on them. Let's go ahead and finish this form, and then we'll delete this feature. Let's create a new form. I'm just going to create a simple box. I'll click here. I want to change the parameters because I don't want 22 faces. Let's start with 8 and width faces 8 and side faces 8. So this is still a lot of geometry, but it'll allow us to see what is happening. The first thing to realize is that what you're looking at right now is not what the form really is. We can use utilities and we can change the display mode from box. This is actually where the points are or control, so we can see the box and the smooth form, or we can see the smooth form. Each of these has a keyboard shortcut. So select the object, press control one for box mode, control two for wire mode, and control three for smooth mode. It's important to switch back and forth between the modes so you can see what your model is doing. We have a lot of modify tool commands here. We can edit the form, edit by curve, insert an edge, and insert point. I'll show you a few of the things that we would do often. So for example, we can modify insert an edge, and if I click this edge, I get an option to insert it. I can choose both or single, and I can change the location. But notice it's only inserting one. So it only inserted an edge there. If I double click on a loop, then I can go modify insert edge and it'll go all the way around. And again, I can choose both. And then I can move this closer or farther away and then say OK. So that way the edge goes all the way around. Normally, this is very bad because we don't want something to have five points. We want things to have four sides. But in Fusion, we can make pieces like this. We can also insert points. If I click insert point, I can draw on the shape and I'll insert points where I want them. And then it creates an edge in between. And this can be a great way to add in new geometry. So now I have this form right here. We can also modify and we can weld vertices. All of these forms are made up of different vertices that describe the points. So I can click this vertex and that one, and it'll start welding them together. 
This can be a great way to create new geometry or to fix problems in your geometry where you may have them. We can also click a face, right click and delete. We can click multiple faces and delete them. And then we can actually fill that hole in. If I go modify, fill hole, I can click this hole and then Fusion will try to fill it in. As you can see, Fusion's fill in of the hole is worse than what we had originally. Then we can also unweld edges. So if I click this entire loop and I say unweld, those are now not together anymore. And then I can modify unweld these edges and say OK. So now this form is a separate form. Notice how it went back to smooth mode, yet this one is in box mode. Then I can select this form and I can move it away from the other form. So now this form is over here. And then I'll move it up. So this brings us to another thing that's important. We can go modify bridge and I can double click all these outside edges and then I can click all these edges. And now I can say OK. And now Fusion is going to try to bridge in between. This is an extreme example, but you can see how you can reconnect forms and then be able to edit them. Let's go ahead and delete this form and bring in a new box. And this time we will decrease the number of sides on our box to four, four, and four. So now our box is a bit more simple. We can crease edges. So if I click crease, I can click these edges to crease them and you can see how Fusion is making those edges nice and crisp as opposed to smooth. This is great for making bottoms or things that are flat. If you know this has to intersect with a flat surface, that's a great way to do that. There are many more commands in the modify menu, but those are some of the basic ones that you'll need to get started working with forms in Fusion 360. Now let's talk about actually modifying the form. If I right click on the form, I can click edit form. This is also available from the modify menu. Once we do this, suddenly I can move the form around and this is where the real power of T-spline modeling comes out. So I can move these things around, I can translate, I can translate on this plane or on this plane. And over here, I can decide if I want to have my control. So for example, if I just want to rotate, I can rotate the pieces like this. Or if I only want to be able to scale them, I can scale it in this direction or in that direction. I can click this piece over here and then I can scale it in a single direction or I can have all the commands available to me. And so now I have a choice of uniform scale. I can move it and I can rotate it. Sometimes this control interface is too confusing, so you can select one that you want to have. Next is the coordinate space. We can choose between world space, which is what you're used to in Fusion, so this moves on the X, Y, and Z axes. We can also use view space, so whenever I orient my view, now this is up, or if I go this way, now that is up. So it changes based on the way I look at the model. We can pick selection space. This is very convenient once you have things that aren't on the XY plane. If I shift click these two pieces, it picks a spot that is perpendicular and oriented to the selection. And then if I pick these two, I can still come out from that selection. So that's a very convenient way. And then you can also do local per entity where it does it per each piece. We can use different selection filters, just like in the design workspace. We can click only vertexes, or only edges, or only faces, or we can select all. Many times you'll select all, but sometimes you need precise control. And you can also select bodies. So if you need to move the whole body, you can select those bodies. And of course, I can scale the body just like that. And I can scale it this way and I can rotate it. So that's a very powerful feature as well. We also have something called soft modification. If I click one of these, let's go back to all. 
So I click this face and I move it. It moves the faces right next to each other, but the rest of the model kind of stays still. If I click soft modification, now when I move it, you can see that the rest of the model is responding. We can choose by distance and increase it or decrease that distance. We can go by face count. And again, we can increase it. So now the entire model is stretching as I move the pieces around. And then I can decrease that. So it moves a little bit, but not all of it. So that gives you fine control over the different pieces of the model. And that works on all things, including scale. And then you can change the transition, whether it's linear, smooth, or a bulge. So this is going to bulge out. So that's a nice thing. And then you can control the weight, how strong that effect is. We also have selection options. So for example, I can grow my selection by clicking this or shrink my selection. And it does it in a uniform way. You see how it's just growing around. We can also, I'm going to turn off soft modification. Say I have a loop selected. I can grow the selection of my loop or I can decrease the selection of my loop. So this is a very nice control that you can do. I can do the same thing with a ring. What is a ring? Well, if this is a loop, then the perpendicular ones are rings. So you can see how now it looks like a ladder. Think of rings as ladders and they go around and then I can also decrease that selection. Then I can grow that selection and then I can continue to increase that selection just like that with the rings. So you can have very precise control over what you need. We can also invert the selection. So maybe I want to have everything but this piece and then I invert that selection, then everything else's selection. And I can also have a range selection. Let's go ahead and delete this form and bring in another box. And I want to show you that you can have symmetry involved in this. So if I click symmetry, I can click both faces. And now I have symmetry. And when I go modify edit form and I click this face, notice the other side moves with it. So this is a great way to be able to create interesting forms that are the same on both sides. Many things in life are mirrored. And so by using symmetry, we can start to create biomorphic forms very quickly. There's one other very special tip you need to know for working with T-splines. If I click this square and I hold the Option or Alt key and then tug, look at that. It extrudes and then I can tug again tug again. And then I could rotate this. If I select selection space, now I can move up this way and go option tug, option tug, rotate, and keep pulling out. And I can make very interesting shapes just by using extrude. And then I can also hold alt or option and scale things like this. And then I can pull out. I can select multiple pieces. So if I select these four, now watch when you have symmetry on, I've selected these four. And if I pull up, notice it pulls up two pieces. You would think it would join them together. But now if I click this piece, this piece, this piece, this piece, even though I have symmetry on, and now I scale them, notice they become a group. And then I can pull this out and then rotate. And then I can scale. You can make forms very quickly this way, and it's a lot of fun. So hopefully this gets you started in the Sculpt workspace. When you click Finish Form, sometimes you'll have an error. So it will return, and then we can fix this. So here we have the T-splines intersecting. That's easy enough. So we'll edit the form. We'll move that back over. And if this happens, remember, we can go to box mode and see what's going on. So in box mode, it's very clear. As you can see here, we have this piece that shouldn't be here. So I can click this and I can move those over. And now it's still a funky form. But if I say OK and then finish form, that error should be gone. Once we're here, I can use all of the solid modeling tools that we have before. So for example, if I create a sketch right here and I press P to project, I can project that body in and then I can draw a circle right here. 
I can press E to extrude. And if I go symmetric both ways, I can blast a hole straight through there. And then all of these pieces are editable with parametric modeling features. So I can click that and then I can make a fillet and say, okay. So this is a very powerful. So I just had a mesh and now I'm using parametric modeling tools to change it. Fusion 360 is not the best polygon modeler, but if you combine it with all the different features that you have in Fusion 360, including surface and solid modeling, it can be a very powerful tool to make forms quickly. Have fun form modeling with T-splines in Fusion 360.